Hey everyone, JVD here from the Villains of the Man, bringing you another comic book review over Infamous Iron Man issue 7 through 12, titled Absolution of Doom. Um, as I said in the first video, I guess this would be volume 1, though I don't ever see this book uh, being reissued under even a different character. Um, like I said, they should have just called this, you know, Doom or Victor Von Doom, Doctor Doom, because that's, that's who it is, even though he wants to be Iron Man. Um, as I said, uh, I really thought, uh, around issue 7, issue 6 should have been tied in with the same story. As I said, uh, all 12 issues are very one big story. There's not a really split in between stories like a story arc. It's basically kind of like a maxi series. But, um, you find out, um, why Doom's mother is back in this, which was a, a really, really good part of the story. And, uh, um... Doom has continued to take out uh, villains, which continue. It's kind of where the this whole arc picks up from. I should say this uh, volume of the series, and uh, that's it. From there, the book really kind of takes off. You, know, you realize why Reed Richards is back, who's the maker, um, and you see these visions Doom's having of the future, and uh, almost as if the uh, visions are trying to communicate with him and it's always during uh, times of stress uh, most likely like in combat like he gets with the wizard and uh, you really find out um, where those are coming from and what they're about and uh, I'm really curious to see where that goes because obviously it leads to the future of the Iron Man series and it's um, something you really don't expect it's uh, really cool, and um, I'll get to more of that later. Um, it's Riri shows up in this book, and uh, she's kind of the catalyst for the whole thing, where you see exactly what it is and whatnot. But um, like I said, really love this story, all 12 issues. Um, I really didn't think I would. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, and I really didn't like the idea of him being Iron Man. Uh, at this time, the suit does tend to grow on me. I kind of complained about it in the review for the first part of the series. But um, it's really starting to grow. Um, I've seen that uh, he still continues, it seems like, to have the suit in the uh, Marvel 2 and one That uh, seems like it's currently wrapping up, so I'm really curious to see how that turns out. I'm really curious to read that. But like I said, after this, I'll finish up the uh, Invincible Iron Heart series, which is with Riri Williams, before that kicks back off into Iron Man. But uh, to kind of uh, get some spoilers here, um, the beginning of this book is Doom winds up tracking down the wizard, and he's basically with the uh, Hoods gang. I'm not calling him the Red Hood, that kind of may be an insult depending on who you talk to. But, um, and it's all these Sealess villains, and this kind of took place, um, guessing around Dark Reign when Osborne kind of came in control of uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. and there was Hammer and everything. And it's uh, him and all his villains, and, uh, this kind of goes back and forth where, with the Wrecker, and he was the only person that escaped, and uh, the thing is talking to him on the Shield Helicary, and he thinks Doom has just killed everybody, because he shows up, and obviously there's no one there that can take him out, and uh, Ben doesn't let him know any different, just kind of see what Doom had said, and uh, there's this part where, um, you know, uh, the record mentioned that uh, when he's talking to Doom in the flashbacks that uh, he was sorry when he mouthed off to him. And I'm like, when is this? You know, when did, when did this happen? So I got to think about it. And it had to be during the original Secret Wars. So uh, I found out. So I kind of went through the old Secret Wars and found it out. But um, so him, the Absorbing Man, Doc Ock, and uh, some others are uh, kind of uh, mouthing off to Doom that, you know, they're going to take over this place and whatnot, and it's obviously Doom's not having any of it, and uh, it's where he rebuilds the Ultron and attacks him with it, and they kind of quickly apologize. I think the Raider's the first one that speaks up, and it's pretty funny, and that just kind of shows you how good Bendis is about adding stuff, and there's a lot of little stuff like this in this whole book, um, and I thought that was really funny, and the... Uh, when this book last, uh, the last volume lot left off, or uh, might even be in this one, because like I said, all this kind of runs together really fast. Uh, ben Grimm meets uh, Reed Richards, and Reed Richards is trying to talk him into killing Doom, which is very unlike him, and that kind of leads him to believe that it's not him. He even calls up Johnny Storm, tells Johnny about it, 
And uh, they really talk about how they miss Reed and Sue. And even Johnny realizes this isn't Reed. Reed would never ask you to, you know, kill Victor Von Doom, despite how many times you've wanted to. So uh, that even kind of sets the thing off the path that this can't be Reed Richards. Um, then this is where Riri shows up. Um, and this is where the book starts to get really interesting. And uh, she meets Doom and uh, they're talking to her. And uh, she asks, he asks her to to blast him again. And uh, so he can have these visions. He's kind of catching on. This is where he gets them from. And uh, so he, he sees this technological like metropolis and uh he's realizes that uh he's walking around trying to figure out what this is and this vision and he meets tony stark and tony stark has a beard uh and he looks like dr strange and basically he has become the sorcerer supreme now you don't know if this is some alternate version of the sorcerer supreme if this is the actual future of marvel because in uh, when Bendis was doing all the X Men stuff, you um, you had seen that he had uh, made magic the Sorcerer Supreme, which I was a really big fan of because I really enjoy magic. She's one of my favorite X Men, if not my favorite X Men. So um, and you see this now, which goes back to um, something I was talking about with when everything restarted with Secret Wars with uh, Iron Man and Doctor Strange. Is there's always been this thing in Marvel with magic versus science and you know science uh, to all the science guys like Tony and Hank Pym, Reed Richards, Hank McCoy, Bruce Banner is you know magic is just science that we can't explain yet and Doctor Strange is always like no you don't understand magic is magic it's not science so it's always been this um, this little rivalry between you know magic and science and here we see Tony, who is obviously one of the eight smartest people in Marvel, become the Sorcerer Supreme in some timeline. So I'm very curious to see how that turns out. Um, especially considering now at this time he is in a coma and his subconscious is uploaded into Riri Williams' Iron Man armor AI. So i um, curious to see where that goes off. Um, but anyways, uh, there's a battle between Doom and his mother. And uh, this is where the thing finds him. And, uh, you know, he's trying to tell him that he needs to run. And uh, he, I guess, due to the way this is set up, that um, Doom actually lets the thing take him into the helicarrier to Sharon Carter. And uh, they don't understand what's going on. And he, he's asking for Doctor Strange. So uh, he uh, he's talking to Doctor Strange about what's going on and they're in the... They're kind of meditating, and Sharon Carter makes the joke that I meditate like that all the time, and I never, you know, levitate. And so, uh, it was just like I said, another joke with Ben Dissett, even at this time, when they're talking about it, um, Doom keeps talking and talking and talking, and Strange is like, calm down, I'm getting in the zone, auto zone. I tell people that all the time when they say they're getting in the zone, so I found that really humorous. Um, but uh, anyway, so they're talking about Reed... And his mother coming back. And I had mentioned earlier the first time uh, when Cynthia had attacked Thing and uh, Dumastad at Liberia. That when she kind of was throwing up magic you would see the uh, pentagram. And I thought wow you know it's kind of very Mephisto like which kind of ties her and uh, Victor Rodin's characters up with Mephisto having her soul and everything. And come to find out both of them realized that it is Mephisto it's not his mother. And then when Reed Richards shows up at the helicarrier. And the thing that Sharon Carter kind of, you know, going to arrest him, um, they break out and there is a fight between um, Victor Von Doom, Doc Strange, and Mephisto. And it's cool because Mephisto is stretching around like he's actually Reed Richards. And then he winds up turning into Mephisto, which kind of blows Sharon Carter's mind. Because she's like, is this the devil? And the thing's kind of like, no, uh, you know, and... They're trying not to tell her it's the devil without it being the devil because Mephesto being the devil, you know, or being Mephesto is kind of one of them blurred lines. Like, you're supposed to assume that he is, but you also know in Marvel there's more than just one devil running around. But um, while he's in the middle of this battle, there's some very humorous stuff that goes on where uh, Mephesto is breaking the fourth wall and he's actually talking to you. 
And uh, it's really, really funny. And I thought I had took pictures of... Oh, here we go. Never mind. So, um, let's see. Uh, he's talking to him as they're battling. I'm trying to tell you that, you know, they're eventually going to banish him. And that he knows how this is going to go. Because he did not expect Doctor Strange to be there. And no matter what, Victor Von Doom's his soul is so corrupted that he owns his soul. And he's going to do whatever he can to not let Victor Von Doom redeem himself. So I'm curious how that's also going to play out in this whole book. Because here we know Mephisto has already said that his soul is corrupted. But he is kind of scared that maybe Doom will turn a new leaf. And that's kind of what the whole thing with Ben Grimm and Sharon Carter. And even when Maria Hill was around that, Doom can't turn a new leaf. No matter what he's done. He's done enough evil in the world. But, um... So at the end of this, uh... He's talking about how he needs to sow. And he goes on to say, I, I need to do this. This is a cosmic karma of debt. The fuck... Uh, he fucked with the devil, I'm gonna assume is what it's saying. Because it's blurred out. And now the devil has, uh... Has something, something in the back. But anyways, he's like, listen... Um, I know you all. I know what you do when you're alone, and I know what you really think about. I know I'm going to see most of you soon. Stop kidding yourselves. And it's pretty funny because he's bringing forth wall while he's talking to you, and he knows that we, as uh, human beings, are not perfect. We all sin. Now that I'm a believer in any religion or faith or whatnot. But basically, he's accusing everybody of being sinners and accusing them all of damnation. And that he'll see his suit. So every time you read this book, everybody reads this book. And Fesso is giving you that little um, tidbit there that, hey, you're in this book. I know what you're doing when no one's around. I know what you think when you're by yourself. You're going to hell. See you later. And uh, it's a really nice way to end this book. It's pretty funny. So, um, even if you don't have this book, just pick up issue 12 just for that. It's, it's hilarious. It's, it's completely worth it. Um, but anyways, uh, at the end of this book, uh, we get some plots going on, uh, for the future. Um, all the villains are plotting revenge for Victor Von Doom for incarcerating them. Because that's his good thing to do to try to prove to Sharon Carter that he's actually turning a new leaf. And they're going to plot to get revenge on him. And I don't see how it's going to work because anybody that was there... None of them are powerful enough to take on Doom. And even the Hood, despite him being as weak as what he is compared to Doom, even though his Hood is tied to Dormammu, um, he can't even take Doom. But yet, he was one that was really fearless in the fight. So I'm curious to see where that's all going to go up to. And uh, another note I want to make on that while I'm thinking about it is uh, Griffin is there during all this when the uh, Doom breaks in on all the CD list villains. The last time I checked, he was actual Griffin, which happened to... Uh, in the Hercules title, the Herc title after uh, Chaos War, and, and then two were battling, he actually turned him into a griffin. So when did he turn back into this humanoid-looking figure? Uh, that's probably just, you know, it's one of the things no one cares about that character. No one's ever going to pay attention to it. Anybody who actually reads comic has probably thought, like, forgot about it, except for me. I remember that, clearly, so I don't know when that happened. So maybe I'm going to dig around and find out when that happened. Um, I'll probably check like Comic Vine or somebody. They're pretty good at keeping up with stuff like that. Um, and then this book really uh, ends with Amara, Tony's girlfriend, finding out she's pregnant. So I'm very uh, curious um, to what's going to happen there. Uh, that's not the way I expected the book in. It's a nice little gift from Bendis. Because uh, this is one of the last books he wrote before he left for DC Comics. He's wrapping up his Iron Man stuff. So um, that makes me even want to read the end of Riri Williams even more. To see if there's any little goodies like that in there. But uh, overall it's a really good story. Like I said, Bendis has been really good. Even as I'm reading the Riri stuff right now. As I do this review. Um, to going back to stuff that he has wrote. And adding in his books. Like the Red Hooks gang. I mean that is really cool. Going back to Secret Wars. To where... Um, the Wrecking Crew and the Wrecker had mouthed off to Doom, and you know Doom had wound up showing them, you know, who's the true supervillain here. Um, you know, the joke with the uh, getting in the zone, auto zone for Doctor Strange, really good stuff. This is why I love Bendis, and uh, he's going to write Superman for DC. And I hate Superman as a character, but he's writing it. I'm going to pick it up. He's writing uh, Man of Steel, uh, Superman, and Action Comics, and he's known for getting three books together. So I'm pretty excited about that. But um, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with uh, Victor Von Doom, a.k.a. Doctor Doom, a.k.a. Infamous Iron Man. 
Um, even with this two and one going on, if he's actually going to stay this uh, guy trying to turn a new leaf and being a hero, or if he's actually going to go back to the ways of being this anti-villain who has you know what's right for the world in his mind, but goes about doing it in a very selfish way, which is what he's talked about in this book, this entire series. So I'm curious where they're going to go with that. But uh, I'm JVD for Villains Man. Keep reading, guys.